Let's move on to the visualization. I will turn on the asset editor. We can find it in the top left corner. As we can see, there are even more V-Ray icons, which I will use soon. If you want to find these icons, it's enough to right-click on the top bar here, select the first two V-Ray categories, it's V-Ray for SketchUp and V-Ray Lite. We also have other tools, but the first two categories are the most important for us. The tools icon are visible and the asset editor is on the left side. It's a circle icon. I click on it. I wait for the panel to appear. The asset editor panel pops up and I will discuss all the tabs. I click on the icon in the upper left corner. This is a material icon and here I have all the materials that are currently in the scene. There are not many of the materials due to the fact that everything is covered with white color. Each material has its own settings and properties. So, if I want to expand the panel on the right side, I can see that each material has its own appearance, color and texture. The texture preview is on the right side with all material properties below. There are other icons in the lower left corner. From the left, there is a place where we can create new materials, textures, lights, geometries, and render elements. Next to it, there is a folder where we can import materials. Using the third icon, we can save the asset. If we like the material, for example, color M00, I click on the disk icon and then save the material in the folder. Later, we can import it into another project. The fourth icon is delete asset. If I don't like the red material, I click on it, select the trash bin icon and approve its removal. The material is gone. The fifth icon is purge unused elements. If we created or imported some materials and later removed it because we changed our concept, all we have to do is click on this icon and all unused materials will disappear. Unfortunately, it does not always work, therefore it's better to use a trash can icon. Let's move on to the next category. The next category is light. And here are all the lights we have in the scene. Note that the only light we have is sunlight. This is the default light. If I click on it, I see that on the right side there are all the settings related to the light. Another icon is geometry. Here I'll find various elements related to geometry, for example, section. We created the section that passed through the wall and we can go to the section settings. I will come back to this topic in a moment. The fourth tab is render elements. I will use that a little later. The textures aren't used often in V-Ray, so I skip them for now. Render settings is a very important tab. Here I can set the resolution, visualization quality, aspect ratio and the rendering engine. Actually, we can set here all things related to visualization that will be created. The first tab is render. At this point, I can choose the engine I want to use to create the visualization. The first position is CPU, which is the central processor. I can create a visualization using a processor in our computer. If I have an installed graphic card dedicated to V-Ray, for example, NVIDIA, I can choose CUDA. Then our render will be created using a graphics card. The third option is RTX. If I have a graphic card with an RTX in the name, for example, NVIDIA RTX, then I can choose the option. If we don't know what is in our computer, we can click on the three dots on the right side. Let's see that with RTX option turned on, I don't have any graphic cards available. But with the CUDA turned on, I see that there is an NVIDIA graphic card. That's why I'm going to choose this option. The next thing is the type of a render. I can choose an interactive or progressive render. What's the difference between them? Let's start with interactive render. I will enable interactive render. Note that the panel has changed a little bit. Let's check this type of visualization. I will start the rendering process. I click on the kettle icon with a hand. A new panel has appeared. 
This is V-Ray frame buffer. And here we have a live preview of the visualization. For now, all elements are white. We can see a yellow or blue light. They come from a sunlight and environment. Interactive render means that we have a real-time preview of the situation in the scene. If I pick up the coffee table in SketchUp, I will move it up. I can see that in the interactive render, these changes have also been made. It's really useful because we can change the light setting with the live preview, so we save a lot of time because this preview is live all the time. So we can see all the changes in the visualization very quickly. I will move the coffee table again so that it returns to the carpet. We can see that this change has also been updated here. I disable interactive rendering. I click on the kettle with a red square. The render has been turned off. Interactive render is very useful. However, as you can see, it does not work perfectly due to the fact that it's a live render. Its quality is not the best. We can see a lot of noise in the scene. Depending on the computer, the interactive render may look better or worse. Let's move on to the further render settings. The interactive render is turned on. I turn it off for a while. And then I will move on to the progressive render. This is not a lifetime preview render. However, if I have a progressive render turned on, I can quickly check what the visualization looks like. Below, there is a quality of the render. I can choose from the smallest, which is low, to the highest, which is high plus. For now, I want to create a low quality visualization. Therefore, it's enough to set the quality to medium. Remember that if you want to create the final visualization, then the quality should be high. Let's see what the progressive render looks like. I click on the render icon, and I can see that the visualization is being created again. Note that the interactive render is much darker than the progressive one. A progressive render is more similar to a realistic visualization than the interactive one. We can see that the render has been created and it's very, very bright. It's also related to the fact that we haven't applied any V-Ray materials to the models in the scene so far. These are all the materials created in SketchUp. If you want to create the final visualization, it's best to turn off the progressive render as well. Then the quality of the visualization will be the highest. Remember that the interactive render is a live render. Progressive render is quick preview of the visualization, and if the interactive and progressive render is turned on, then we can create a final visualization. For now, I will enable progressive render. A very important thing is denoiser. This is a function which removes or reduces the noise in the scene. The noise are these very small dots in the visualization. I don't want to have this noise visible. Therefore, the noise should be turned on, and we can turn on V-Ray or NVIDIA denoiser. It's related to our graphic cards. I can leave V-Ray denoiser. The next tab is Camera. Here we don't have to change anything. We can only pay attention to the exposure value. If we decrease this value, the visualization will be brighter. If I increase this value, the visualization will be darker. But I can also do this at the later stage, creating a bathroom scene. Then I have a render output. Here I can set the resolution of the visualization. So far it's 800 by 450 pixels. If I'm in the creating process, I can leave this resolution. If I want to create the final visualization in high quality, I can increase this value to, for example, two and a half or 3000 pixels. For now, I will leave the preview render 800 by 450. It's good to turn on the save frame option. Thanks to this, I can see which places will not be rendered. After enable the save frame option, I can notice that darker rectangles have appeared at the top and at the bottom. It's a space that will not be visible in our visualization. Let's see that if I change the ratio of the visualization to, for example, one to one, then on the right side and on the left side, I will have darker spaces and they will not be rendered. I'll go back to the previous ratio and it's fine. 
Another important thing is material overwrite. As we can see, we have created a model, but haven't created any V-Ray materials yet. Those in the materials panel are materials that have been copied from SketchUp. Remember that when modeling an interior or a building, we create or import many materials to SketchUp. All these materials appear in V-Ray materials panel, but it doesn't mean that they are V-Ray materials. They are just materials from SketchUp and they won't look good on visualization. We should create a V-Ray materials by ourselves, which we'll do later during the course. Let's go to the settings, then turn on the material override option. Now all elements in the scene have been covered with V-Ray gray material. I can lighten this material a little so that it looks more like a white material. And now if I turn on the visualization, I can see that the brightness in the scene looks different. This is due to the fact that each element is covered with a white V-Ray material. What's important? At the very beginning of creating a visualization, we should turn on the material override option and then set the light. Setting the light is the first and the most important step in the proper creation of visualization. That's why I turn on material override and all materials are covered with white gray color. And now I can turn on visualization and click on the kettle icon. The visualization has been created. Now that it's already much darker. This is due to the fact that all materials are covered in V-Ray gray material.